graffiti to me, it's someone punching you right in the gut and saying, hey, I'm here. And respect this, you know? And I think that side of it really makes it alive. It makes it organic, it makes it real. My name is Decoy, I'm a working artist. I dabble in graffiti and I dabble in fine art, working on canvas works, wood panels, spray paint, stencils, acrylic, oil paint, pretty much anything that uh, I can get my hands on and produce art. So Decoy, it would be cool to say that somebody gave me that name. Wouldn't that be neat if someone just came up and said, yo man, you're kind of a distraction. But I actually gave myself that name. I didn't want to have my name on everything. And maybe I shouldn't have cared, but I did. Graffiti, for me, began not that long ago. Uh, I definitely, I would say, jumped into it middle road. I think it wasn't really until I started hanging out with the culture that it really started to influence me. Uh, I ultimately was more traditionally trained with art. And then I went into to college with that mindset and also trying to make a living, which is where I went into graphic design and got into computers and stuff like that. But I would say after I got out of college uh, is really when I started to even think about dabbling with cans. So we're talking like, you know, late 90s, you know, and then I would say I really started taking it seriously in about 2004. When I first did my first piece, it was um, Mural of King Kong, and it's something I'm very known for, and, and every now and again, uh, you know, I have people come up to me and they'll be like, hey, I saw your piece on the internet because that piece is way out there in circulation and stuff. And I think if if I was ever, you know, when I'm, if I make it to be 50 or 60 years old, I mean, I think that's the one piece that really launched everything for me and made me become a street artist was the reaction that people had to that particular piece. And it was a stencil piece with the Roy Lichtenstein approach. It's another influence of mine. I try to not limit myself to one or two or three artists. Sometimes I'll pick up a book and just look at whatever's there and not necessarily even care who the name is of the artist and kind of just take it as influence. But I would say Jean-Michel Basquiat, Roy Lichtenstein, Andy Warhol, Salvador Dali. So if you look back at that, there was so much going on. Uh, with art and, and, and the evolution of the street to the gallery per se. Uh, Keith Haring is also another one who kind of followed that process and was a big influence on me and in seeing their process and how they went from the street to the gallery. And the funny thing for me is I kind of went from the gallery and then into the street. I kind of did the opposite. Now it's become one of my favorite uh, tool sets is, is taking a can and painting with it or incorporating it into anything that I'm doing. Uh, the can is just such an organic tool to use for art. It's just that organicness, you know, you don't have to sit there and set up, you know, a whole bunch of paints and brushes and things like that. You just grab the can and run with it, you know. My artwork is dominantly freeform but I've over the years incorporated stenciling into my artwork uh, to try to come up with my own style and my own technique that I feel is mine. Uh, you know, produce them from scratch in the computer, I vectorize them, I output them on a vinyl plotter, and then I hand weed them and tape them. It's a very hands-on process. It's just as hands-on as hand cutting. It's just not as time consuming because I have a short attention span and I have to get things done fast. Art is meant to be conceptual, but it can't be conceptual if you don't have an eye for it. And that eye can be trained by what you influence yourself with what you absorb. Sacrifice with art crosses many different things. And I think when you decide to yourself that I want to be known for something, I want to go down in the history books, I want to be a legend, I want to be these things, your ego comes into play and it immediately becomes individualistic to yourself. And when you do that, you end up sacrificing family, you sacrifice money, you sacrifice lifestyle, you sacrifice all of these things naturally because of that drive to succeed in that one thing. I would say if anybody was to ask me, hey decoy, are you a graffiti artist? 
I would say no. But am I insulted if you went to your friends and said Decoy is a graffiti artist? Absolutely not. And I think that if you want to be titled a graffiti artist, the day you decide to paint, like I said, out in an area where you, you essentially wouldn't see it being done, you could at that point say I'm a graffiti artist. I think it would be kind of cool to say that, hey, I'm just an artist.